Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Cooperschmidt, the CEO of the Copyright Alliance, and I want to welcome you to this installment of the Copyright Alliance's Copyright Academy. Today's episode is part of our new series on the Copyright Claims Board, which is also called the CCB for short. Now, in this series, the Copyright Alliance staff will take an in-depth look into the processes and the procedures of the CCB for copyright owners who are looking to understand more about the CCB. Today, we, we will be talking about costs and fees that are associated with bringing and defending claims before the CCB. Now, before we start discussing that, I wanna make sure our listeners are familiar with some of the terms that we're gonna to refer to uh, when we've heard refer to the parties involved in a CCB suit. And we'll reference those terms, not only during this video, but at future videos, uh, so I think it's good that, that people know what we're talking about and what these terms mean. So the first term I'll define is the term claimant. A claimant is a party that files claims with the CCB. So when you think of a claimant, you think of uh, a plaintiff like in federal or state court. They're very, very similar. But in the CCB, that person is called the claimant. A part, the party that the claimant is suing is referred to as the respondent. And a respondent is similar to the person referred to as a defendant in federal or state court. But in the CCB, as I mentioned, that person is called the respondent. And just to close the loop, even though we probably won't use this term all that often, when a respondent responds to a claimant's claim by filing their own claims against the claimant, they are also referred to as a counterclaimant. So in essence, uh, uh, the counterclaimant and the respondent are the same person. They're just sometimes referred to as a counterclaimant and sometimes referred to as a respondent, depending on the particular situation. So hopefully that makes sense to folks. Um, uh, and, and, and with that information in hand, I think it makes sense for us to now move forward. So let me introduce Rachel Kim. Uh, Rachel is our one of our copyright counsels for the Copyright Alliance. And we're gonna talk about fees and costs, about bringing a case and defending a case uh, with Rachel. So uh, Rachel, welcome on board. Uh, the first question I have for you, kind of basic, how much does it cost to file a claim with the CCB? So the total filing fee um, to bring a claim or claims before the CCB is $100. And this is hundreds of dollars less than the fee to file a case um, in federal court, which is currently a little over $400. Um, but the again, the total filing fee to file claims for the CCB is $100, but it's actually split into two separate payments. So you have a first payment of $40, and then you have um, a second payment of $60. So you have got these two fees, they have to be paid at different times, presumably. So when is each fee actually due? So the initial filing fee of $40, that's due when the claimant files their claims with the CCB. So after the claimant files their claims with the CCB, the copyright claims attorney will then review those claims. And then if they approve them, then the claimant will then notify the respondent about those claims, um, usually through something called service of process, uh, which we'll go into more detail about in, a, in another CCB series video. But um, basically after being notified of the claims, the respondent then has 60 days to opt out of the proceeding if they wish to. Um, and you know, after the 60 days have passed and the respondent has not opted out of the proceeding, then the CCB will issue an order asking the claimant to pay the second filing fee, which is $60. So that fee um, must be paid within 14 days of the CCB order. All right, so this whole idea of splitting filing fees, it, it's a little odd, I think. I mean, like in federal court, you just pay one, a filing fee, you pay the whole amount at one time. Uh, so why is that? Why, why is the, the filing fee split into two fees? Why did the Copyright Office do that? So just to take a step back in terms of, um, you know, why the CCB proceeding is, is voluntary. It's to ensure that the CCB is constitutional. So again, participation is, is voluntary, which is why um, respondents have the right to opt out of a CCB proceeding. As I mentioned before, they have the 60 days to decide that. 
Um, but what Congress recognized, though, was that if a respondent chooses to opt out, um, then the claimant can lose out on their filing fee without ever having their claims heard by the CCB. And this runs contrary to the intent that the CCB process be an affordable and accessible process for claimants that be much more affordable than federal court. Um, and that's why Congress actually proposed a two-tiered fee system, um, which would be better, you know, if the first fee is relatively small, that lessens the financial burden on the claimants um, if the respondent opts out. And so the Copyright Office decided to adopt this two-tiered fee structure um, to, to keep in line with the, with the goals that the CCB process be an affordable process. All right, that, that, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. Hopefully it makes a whole lot of sense to our listeners as well. And, and they understand kind of why, why it's uh, done this way then. So, uh, okay, so we've talked about the $100 filing fee and then it's broken up into $40 and $60. We pay it at different times. Um, so if someone does bring a copyright infringement claim and they do need to register their work before they bring that copyright infringement claim, does the $100 filing fee you just mentioned cover the cost of registering the work that is the subject of the infringement suit, or is that a, a completely separate fee? So the, the cost or the fees to register a work is completely separate from the CCB process. Um, so we'll discuss sort of the processes and the, and the procedures of filing claims with the CCB in another CCB series video. Um, but basically for an infringement claim or counterclaim, Keith, as you mentioned, um, it can't be filed with the CCB unless the copyrighted work that is the focus of that claim has actually been registered with the US Copyright Office or the registration application is pending with the Copyright Office. Um, in most cases, and in, in many cases, the copyright owner of the work may have already registered the work well before bringing the infringement claim or counterclaim. Um, but for copyright owners who have not yet submitted a registration application for the work, they can submit the registration application to the Copyright Office um, be, you know, immediately before filing their claim with the CCB. Again, just to be clear, the fees to file a registration application with the Copyright Office, again, those are separate from the CCB rules and proceedings. And so the registration fees um, will depend on the characteristics of the work. So we're talking about, you know, what type of work um, the, the copyrighted work is or works. If there are groups of works being registered together, um, the publication status of the work or groups of works. Um, so the costs can usually range between $45 right now to about $95 for filing an electronic registration application um, or for filing a registration application for a group of unpublished works. And uh, the exact schedule of registration fees is actually available on the Copyright Office's website. And we'll provide a link on the screen below, um, but you can also learn more about the actual registration process um, of registering your works in our Copyright Academy video about registration. Um, but lastly, regarding you know, copyright registration, it's important to note that in any case, the CCB cannot make um, a final decision in a proceeding until the work or works in the proceeding are registered with the US Copyright Office. So that means you know, if during the proceeding, your pending application um, is being reviewed by the Copyright Office and the Copyright Office you know, decides to deny the registration, then the CCB will actually dismiss the proceeding. Um, but, you know, in, in many instances, they'll accept the registration applications. It's pretty rare to, to deny the registration application, um, but it's just something to keep in mind um, while moving through the proceeding. That's that's quite interesting. So let's, let's stick on that last point a little bit, the idea that the CCB really can't make a determination until the work is actually registered with the office. And so if somebody registers their work right before filing a CCB case, the, the, the cases, the, the registration application is gonna be pending at the same time the CCB uh, case is pending. And so let's talk a little bit about that, right? So it usually takes an average of about three to four months for the Copyright Office to consider and decide whether to register 
or reject a registration application. And as we talked about, it's it's uh, it's fair, or you, you, as you said, it's fairly rare for them to reject it, but still they have to examine it and, and issue a registration. Um, now, in certain circumstances, for instance, if the copyright owner is planning to bring a lawsuit in federal court, they can pay a special fee, what's called special handling, to expedite the examination process and get a decision within just a couple of weeks, maybe even less than that, right? So they can they can really truncate the registration examination time. And normally that fee is $800. That is a big chunk of change, right? I mean, that is a lot more than the CCB uh, processes, uh, you know, process costs in itself. So um, my question is, is there a different expedited review fee for an application to register a work when that work is involved in a CCB proceeding? So in other words, instead of doing regular special handling, you could do, um, uh, uh, you know, you could, you could, you know, use this expedited system that the CCB process has. And if that fee is different, how much is that fee? And how would somebody apply for that expedited registration? So great question. Um, yes, there is a different fee um, for an expedited review process for a work or works that are part of a CCB proceeding. And that fee is actually much less expensive than the $800 um, you were mentioning. Um, it's actually $50 um, in the case, again, for a work or works that are part of a CCB proceeding, so an expedited review of a registration for those works. Um, so in this case, though, the copyright owner would actually request the expedited registration through the ECCB system. Um, and, you know, to that effect, there are two important things to keep in mind when making this expedited review request. So first, this request can only be made once the case becomes active. So again, we mentioned before that respondents have this right to um, opt out um, within a 60 day period. But once that 60 day opt out period ends and the respondent has not opted out, the case would move forward and the case becomes active. So again, the request for expedited review can only be made once the case is active. And then the second thing to keep in mind um, is that the request, again, must be made through the ECCB system and not the regular Copyright Office registration system. Um, and then in terms of a turnaround timeline, uh, the CCB regulations state that the Copyright Office will aim to complete the expedited review within time business days. Um, so that's, you know, shorter than the timeline for a regular expedited review um, that Keith mentioned. Um, but again, this is sort of the office's goal to do um, the, the expedited review within 10 business days, again, for a work that is part of a CCB proceeding. All right, terrific. Um, so we're talking a lot about fees, of course, that's what this video is about. And we've talked about fees that the claimant would have to pay. We've talked about the the two filing fees, one for $40 and one for $60. We've talked about a registration fee, which is separate and, and, and paid separately, okay? Um, but now let's look at the respondent a little bit, right? Because we wanna make sure this CCB process works for all the parties who are involved, right? Claimants, respondents, other parties. So uh, let's discuss the respondent uh, a bit and what fees they may, may have to pay. At the outset of the proceeding, are there any fees that a respondent would have to pay? And let me, let me just ask the question more specifically. Uh, let's say in response to a claimant's action, a claimant sues a respondent. And so the respondent responds by filing their own claims. They're, those are called counterclaims. Um, or maybe they file defenses, things like they think they have a fair use defense. Are there any fees for them to do that or to do for that matter, anything else with regard to the, the, the beginning of the case? So no, there are no fees to, uh, for a respondent to file counterclaims with the CCB or to raise defenses in response to a claimant's action. So from the outset um, of the proceeding, the respondent will not have to pay any fees. Um, but again, going back to the registration point, if you know, there is a counterclaim being made of infringement of a work, 
um, the respondent just needs to make sure that you know, they have a registration in hand for the work or there is a registration application pending um, for the work. So there might, might be some costs assist or fees associated with that part, but no, there are essentially no fees to, to file a claim, a, a counterclaim or to raise a defense um, from in the outset of a CCB proceeding. Okay, great. So we're talking a lot about the fees, most of which I think apply at the beginning of a case, right? We've talked about the filing fees, we've talked about registration fees, the fact that respondent for the general matter does not have any, 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 any fees to pay. Um, are there other fees that might arise after the case is filed that might apply to either the claimant or the respondent? Yes, so there is another fee that might arise at the end of a proceeding, um, but this only arises in certain circumstances. So after the CCB issues a final determination in a proceeding, um, a party, it doesn't matter if it's the claimant or the respondent, any party in, the, in that proceeding who is not satisfied with the determination um, can, under certain circumstances again, request that the CCB reconsider that determination. There is no fee to request the CCB to reconsider a final determination. So again, I, you know, I alluded to the fact that there are only circum certain circumstances in which this arises. So you know, if the CCB denies uh, the party's request for consideration, that party can then request that the Register of Copyrights uh, review the CCB's decision to deny the reconsideration. Um, in another situation, if the CCB grants the request for reconsideration, changes the final determination, and the opposing party is not satisfied with that changed final determination, the opposing party can also request a reconsideration um, of the new final determination uh, to the CCB. Again, there is no fee associated with that. Um, but if the CCB were to deny that opposing party's request, then that party can also request that the register review the CCB's decision to deny the request. In both cases, whenever any of the parties request the register's review after they've, they've gone through these, these uh, circumstances and these processes, there is a fee to request the register's review, and that fee is $300. So it's not a light fee at all, um, but you know it is uh, it, it is a fee uh, to to request uh, the registrar's review in, in any case. Okay. So and for those of you listening, I think you you might have been with us the whole time, and then all of a sudden the answer to that question you lost us lost us a little bit perhaps because we were talking about a lot of things that first of all are unlikely, probably unlikely to happen, and if so, would happen at the very very end of the. Of, of a case at a determination. And so um, I encourage you, if you want to find out more about that, you know, we, we have a guide, a CCB guide that uh, will be helpful. The Copyright Office has some materials there to be helpful. But it, but just if you were a little confused by that last answer, don't let that, that stand in the way of, of filing a case or anything like that. This is mostly about fees. And in order for us to explain that fee, we had to explain how, how kind of what, what that fee is. And so um, now, the, other than the fees we discussed, I think we're kind of we've kind of exhausted the topic. But are there other potential costs that someone involved in a CCB case might incur? And what, if so, what are those? Sure. So, just taking a step back again, uh, some of the main goals behind the CCB was that it be an affordable alternative to federal court. Um, meaning that the process is relatively inexpensive. So for example, you don't have any travel costs associated with appearing before the CCB um, since all hearings and all you know, proceedings are conducted virtually. Um, additionally, because the CCB system is designed to be simple and understandable um, for all parties, parties can really represent themselves in a CCB proceeding um, and otherwise it's you know, known as appearing pro se. Um, but this essentially means that parties shouldn't have to spend the money to hire an attorney either. So there are a lot of um, things that, a lot of costs and fees that uh, parties don't pay when participating in a CCB proceeding. Um, 
there is a cost to keep, or there is a cost to keep in mind. Um, and that's, you know, in, in the, in, you know, hopefully a rare instance, um, if the CCB determines that any time during the proceeding, a party has engaged in bad faith conduct. And um, if the CCB determines that, then the party acting in bad faith may end up having to cover the other side's legal costs and attorney's fees. And um, these legal costs and attorney's fees can be awarded by the CCB even when that other party does not have an attorney and is appearing pro se or, or is appearing by themselves um, in the, the CCB proceeding. So that's one cost to, to keep in mind um, as parties are moving through the CCB proceeding as well. All right, I think that'll be helpful to the people who are considering filing cases. So there's one last question I have for you, which is really not specific to the CCB or what the CCB is doing, but rather something the Copyright Alliance is doing uh, that I think people will want to know about. Um, and it's what we call our SCOOP program, which stands for Small Claims Opt-Out uh, Protection Program, uh, SCOOP program. Um, it's a special program that we are going to start soon. And depending on when you watch this video, it may have already started. Uh, and participation uh, participants in the program can get their initial $40 fee. Remember we talked about that $40 filing fee? They can get that filing fee reimbursed if the respondent opts out of the proceeding. So maybe you can discuss that program, tell everyone where they can find out more information about it and why we're doing it and, and how to apply. Sure. So uh, we're happy, very happy at the Copyright Alliance to announce that we're going to launch this program. Um, either it's been launched if you're watching this video or it's launching soon. But uh, regardless, you know, the SCOOP program is a new program we're very excited about. Um, and it's to help individual creators counter that potential loss of that $40 initial filing fee. Again, like Keith mentioned, if their CCB proceeding is dismissed, by the CCB due to the response and uh, election to opt out. So what the Copyright Alliance would do through this program is to um, reimburse that $40 for applicants who have been approved to participate in the program. Um, and so interested, you know, potential um, applicants and potential claimants can learn more um, and learn more how to participate in the SCOOP program and apply to it um, on the programs pages of our website at copyrightalliance.org. Um, and applicants must be a member of the Copyright Alliance. Um, so if you haven't already, join the Copyright Alliance uh, to take part in this new program um, and to access you know, a slew of other benefits and educational content like these Copyright Academy webinar series. Um, we have a lot more coming um, your way in terms of um, you know, discussing and doing a deep dive into the CCB process. Um, and other copyright law topics. Membership is completely free. So um, hope you can all join us. All right, thanks, Rachel. Um, and just about the SCOOP program, and we're not, just to be clear, we're not just handing out $40 checks. <laughs> if you're interested in the program, take a look at the requirements and things like that. We wanna make sure people who are filing cases understand the CCB, understand you know, what's permissible and what's not a permissible claim and, and all the other sort of ins and outs of the, of the of this of the CCB, so I encourage you if, if you're interested, and even if you're not interested in getting your forty dollars back, if you just want to know more about the CCB process, I encourage you. Obviously, you've listened to this video, but we have other videos, we have other materials that are up on our website, including I mentioned the 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 guide uh, that we are in the process of updating right now. And like I said, when depending on when you're watching this, it may or the new version may or, of the guide may already be out. Um, so I want to, Rachel, thank you for doing this and answering a bunch of questions about costs and fees associated with filing a case or, or uh, with the CCB or defending a case um, before the CCB. Uh, and I encourage anyone who wants more information to go to our Copyright Alliance website or to uh, go to the Copyright Office website and just find out more information. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, educational information out there. So before you file a CCB case, uh, I encourage you to kind of learn as much about it as you possibly can. So thanks, everyone. Thanks again, Rachel. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah.